Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 623 RBAC using external authentication. So this was a specific request uh, and I thought I'd get this video created. So the first thing we have is Active Directory. In an Active Directory, um, we're gonna create a couple of groups and we're gonna use that to authorize access to Firepower Management Center. So you can see we've got an admin user, right? Assigned to admin group. We've got a security analyst that's assigned to a security analyst group. And then ultimately we have a, a read-only account as well. Um, so that's all we have to do in Active Directory, right? We create the users, we assign them to the appropriate groups, uh, and we're golden here. So here you would add an external authentication object. I've already done that, and I've already went through and, and pre-configured it, but we're gonna walk through it together, right? So let's go ahead and edit this. You can see that um, there's LDAP and Radius. We're gonna choose Radius. We'll give it a name, right? And then you can see server type. We have a variety of options here. We're gonna use Microsoft Active Directory. We're gonna give a primary server address. We could give a backup as well. In my lab, I don't have that. The base DN or distinguished name is DC equals Cisco comma DC equals lab. Now, the username, you can see there CN equals users. Now that usually is OU equals users, right? In Microsoft speak but I couldn't get it to work unless I called that object a CN. Once I did that, it worked. So keep that in mind. Um, here we can also do things like encryption, whether that legacy of SSL or TLS, for example. Attribute mappings, we're gonna map to the SAM account name. So you can do fetch attributes, scroll down, and you'll find the SAM account name itself. You'll add that. The next thing that we'll look at here is the group controlled access rules. So this is where we marry the roles that we create or have within Firepower Management Center to the Active Directory account, right, or group account. And you can see here, I did use OU here, uh, and that works fine. So, and we're gonna do some testing and validate that. But you can see here, that's the, the uh, entire distinguished name, right, from CN equals, all the way down to DC equals uh, lab, in my case is the, the, the root. And you can see we've done that for each one. Again, the naming structure has to match obviously what you have in Active Directory. The group member attribute must be member here. Okay, so you'll wanna enter that. And then from here, you can see default user rule. Now, what I wanna do is show you this. So we're gonna pick administrator. Um, I'm gonna show you the consequences of doing that. So if a user is not found, assigned to a group, the default will be administrator. Shell access filter, we're gonna use the same thing here. And now we're gonna do some testing. So we're gonna use that first user fmc-admin1. There's the password. Um, this obviously is gonna to align to administrator if it works properly, right? So we'll go ahead and hit that test. And we'll wait for the results. And you can see there's success, right? It gives you some good insight into what's happening. Group membership administrator. So that mapped appropriately, that's good. All right, let's try another one, right? Let's try the security analyst role. And that should match obviously to the security analyst RBAC, or sorry, uh, FMC group, right? So we'll run the test. Obviously it takes a second to run it and you can see that matched up perfectly, security analyst. So that's good, so far, so good. And now let's try that read only group. All right. Give it a test. Again, it should marry, if everything's working right, to security analyst read-only group. And we can see perfect. Okay, so far so good. Remember, this is a lab uh, uh, environment that I'm working in, so don't worry about any messages that you see come up. Um, it's, uh, again, a lab environment. Um, Test output, you can see there's a tremendous amount of detail here. If you need to troubleshoot, obviously, uh, this is a good place to start. In our case, we, we had success, uh, so we're, we're good to go.
So what we're going to do is scroll all the way to the bottom of this because I happen to expand that uh, insight into um, what actually took place, right? So here we'll go all the way to the bottom. We'll hit save. So we saved it here, okay? We'll let that come into the next interface. Once it gets into this interface here, you're going to see that we're going to need to enable it. So that's key. And we'll save. Now... We've saved it, we're ready to go, we're gonna do some testing, right? Some people might have noticed something, but we're gonna come back to it. All right, so now let's start testing. So the first one we're gonna try is admin one. Pretty easy to do. Log in with that Active Directory account, and here, oh, what? Well, that's no good, right? All right, let's try again. Try uh, the account. Maybe I did something wrong. And the same result. Now I'm going to log in as admin. Something doesn't seem right. Or wait, before I try that, let me just try another account. Maybe there's something wrong with that account. Hmm. No. All right, let's log in as admin. Let's go back and double check the work that we've done. Now, the ones that know exactly what was missed, fair play to you. Um, we're going to get there in a moment. But uh, let's go through as if we don't know, right? And for some, we, you know, you may not know exactly what happened, but we're, we're going to get there. So let's go back to uh, that users table and let's just double check. Oh, maybe I didn't click that here. Let's do that again. Now I'm I'm working with this other this uh, a new mouse and it seems to be a little bit catchy. I'm RDPing. I'm in a remote location actually as I'm doing building this out. Um, so anyways, so external authentication. We're almost there. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we hit save. Yeah. All right. Ah. Save and apply. It's one of those, right? So you save it. You only saved it within FMC. You st still have to save and apply it to actually apply that saved configuration, right? An easy way to get burned. Um, but uh, but anyways, pay attention. There was a little red uh, line there that said that you needed to, to save. There was unsaved changes, right? So let's give this a try now. Read only. Ah, look at that. You can see that there's some tabs missing here, right? You've got overview and analysis. Uh, all you have under system is health. Okay, so it's a restricted user. Again, this is a default built-in user. You can create custom ones. I have other videos that kind of show that. Um, and then you can map them out, out uh, just like we did here. So let's log in with the security analyst role. So the difference, uh, one role was read only. The other one is um, a security analyst. So maybe there's additional functionality. And I'm not going to go into this exhaustively. I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of things. So you can see, again, we've got some overview tabs. We've got some analysis. Uh, for the most part, looks very similar. Under system, ah, we've got tools, right? And there's probably uh, other capabilities. Again, you can always look at that uh, specific role and look at all the access that it has within FMC. But it, it was obviously different and treated differently. Let's log in as admin one. Now this should be no different than the admin uh, local group that or user that I logged in with before, right? This is full administrative access. So we should see all the buttons, all the tabs, all the bells, all the whistles, right? And we do, right? You can see uh, everything is there. Okay, so that's interesting. I wonder if we log in. Remember, we didn't restrict it to the FMCOU, right? Uh, we used the base DN of Cisco um, dot lab. Um, so let's try HR1 and log in. So this is just a normal user within the Active Directory uh services 
and they were able to log in. And not only were they able to log in, they logged in as administrator. So sometimes you might not know the exact extent of a configuration or parameter. That's why you should always, you know, build it out and then validate, right, by testing. But you can see uh, just a normal user was able to come in here and log in. So we certainly don't want that to happen, right? So because I'm in at HR1, I can actually modify and make changes here. So when we scroll down, again, as HR1, now you would never want this to happen. But, uh, but anyways, I'm just going to go through and show you where the issue was if, if you didn't uh, catch it. But, or maybe you've missed it, right? But right here. Now, it's interesting. Once you've got this actually um, highlighted... In order to unhighlight it, I believe I had to hit control and click, right? Because there is no default of no group, right? There's not like a, a user role that says no access. So when I was in here and I'm looking around, I'm going, okay, how do I actually remove that access? And, and how you have to do it is you hit the control key and then click it. So I'll get to that in a second here. Obviously, you're not going to see that, but but you can see there's no group there that says no access. All right, you can see now it's unhighlighted. There's no default user role. So hopefully, again, I know the result of this, right? But hopefully what happens now is, is that user, so, so even though I saved it as HR1, if, I, if a, a user now connects right remember save and apply but if a user outside of those users that we've assigned they sh it should fail right so any other active director user uh, should not get access to firepower management center right all right so let's log out as uh, hr1 Actually, let me just look here. So you can see that external account. I can't even delete it from here, right? But what's going to happen is uh, let, let me log out. Again, that's that new mouse I have. It's a little too sensitive. All right, so now let's log in as, first I'll log in as sales one, another user that's never logged in before, and let's see what happens now. Now, really, it should be denied. Okay, perfect. It's denied, right? Because there's no default role. So that default role is if I can't find a user assigned to a role, I'm going to give them the default role. Now that we've removed default role, they don't get any access, right? Because they don't, they're not assigned to a role. They'd have to be a member of one of those groups that we created in Active Directory. So let's log in FMC admin one. We should have full-blown access here. And we do. Beauty. That's it. 